Hey everybody, Tim Lewis with TimLewisSports.com here. We're talking fantasy football week 15. Everyone should now be in the postseason. If you're not, your league is ridiculous. Almost wasn't going to do this video blog today. My Hotmail account got hacked. Not cool. Couldn't figure out how to change my password because I couldn't answer my security question. Also not cool. So now they've locked me out of that. Also have an issue going on with one of my eyes. I was going to be a baby about it. Wasn't going to do this. But then I remembered it's not about me. It's about you. And it's about fantasy football. And it's about the playoffs. So let's get to this darn thing. I was going to say a swear word there, but I stopped myself. Thursday game is San Francisco against San Diego. Keep that in mind as you set your starting lineup this week. Well, it's the end of an era. Brett Favre, inactive on Monday, snapped his 297 straight starts. Uh, that's the only injury to really think about at quarterback this week. Even if he does play, uh, Brett Favre does face Chicago this week. If he doesn't play, Tavares Jackson has a very tough matchup against the Bears defense. Matt Castle is the other quarterback to keep an eye on. Obviously missed last week because of an appendectomy. Should be back this week uh, up against St. Louis, so he could put up some decent numbers. If he's out and Brody Croyle is quarterback, Run for the hills. Stay away from that situation at all costs. Kerry Collins, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, John Kitna all have favorable matchups this week. You can throw Matt Schaub in that mix as well as long as he can bounce back from that pick six game-winning touchdown uh, against Baltimore on Monday night. We'll see if he can do that. I'm sure he can. He's a professional. Uh, Peyton Manning looks pretty decent this week as well. He bounced back last week. Should be able to light up Jacksonville this week. He threw for 352 yards and two touchdowns against the Jaguars in their first meeting this season. So Peyton Manning appears to be back. Should be a good choice. On paper, Tom Brady has a tough test against Green Bay. But honestly, I don't really see anyone slowing down the Patriots these days. So Tom Brady, a guy you should start this week as well. Now, I don't think you can call Josh Freeman a sleeper anymore. I think I talked about him last week as well. Uh, he's a definitely a guy you can lean on for fantasy football. He's tossed seven touchdowns and only one interception over his last five games. Now, you might have an argument that only seven touchdowns over five games hurts his value, but he's a guy who averages between you know 13 to 20 points every single week. He's very consistent, and he has been all season. So Josh Freeman, a guy you can turn to. Aren't too many crazy injuries at running back. Joseph Adai might be back. It's one of the guys you might want to keep an eye on. But other than that, it's pretty much the same old, same old. For the first time in a long time, I'm going to give some love to Ricky Williams and Ronnie Brown. They face a weak Buffalo defense this week. Both have big potential on Sunday. Watch out for Darren McFadden. This dude could blow off the charts this week as he faces Denver. So uh, McFadden should be big. Jonathan Stewart is back. He ran for 130. Three yards last week against Atlanta. Has another great matchup this week against Arizona. Uh, on the other side of the ball, there's Tim Hightower, who was huge last week, and I think you can lean on him again as they take on the Panthers this week. Start the stars. Peyton Hillis, Maurice Jones, Drew, Arian Foster, Chris Johnson. You know the list. I uh, also want to throw Adrian Peterson on the list. He's obviously a must-start guy, but he does face Chicago this week. I still think he's a guy who's going to have some great fantasy value. Uh, be very hesitant at running backs involved in that Steelers-Jets game on Sunday afternoon. Not saying don't start Richard Mendenhall, but I'm saying be very weary about that matchup. Uh, same thing goes for LaDainian Tomlinson. Detroit's Javid Best is my sleeper of the week. He goes against Tampa Bay. The Buccaneers allow about 133 yards per game, one of the worst run defenses in the NFL. So Javid Best, my running back sleeper. few injuries to watch at wide receiver, especially for the New York Giants. Hakeem Nix is back, healthy, ready to play, putting up good numbers. Steve Smith came back from a pec injury. But then he hurt his hamstring last week. Mario Manningham also had to leave Monday's game. So keep an eye on those guys. That's going to play uh, big into the New York Giants pass game and depend on who has value there in New York. Keem Nix could be really big. Seattle's Mike Williams is expected back this week. He's missed most or all of the last three games for the Seahawks. Ben Obamano should also... Ob Obamanu. Let me get that last 
vowel correct. It's not an O, it's a U. Obamanu. Um, should also return. Dion Butler is done for the season, so uh, Obamanu should be able to jump right into the starting lineup and possibly have some value as they take on Atlanta this week. Mike Williams, when he's back, if he's back, should definitely be able to put up some numbers. Uh, watch Austin Collie's status in Indianapolis, especially if you're a Pierre Garcon owner. Those two guys kind of go hand in hand as far as fantasy value is concerned. Now, who out there hates Dwayne Bow? And Brandon Lloyd right now. I know I do. Especially Dwayne Bow. The dude has, again, keeping this PC, screwed me over over the last couple of weeks. Uh, because of my anger, I want to say bench them both, but I know that's a really stupid idea. If Matt Castle is not back for Kansas City, I would bench Dwayne Bow because Brody Croyle did not help his cause at all this week. And even when Matt Castle was around, Dwayne Bow had a bad week against Denver. So who knows what's going on there. I say you still have to start him, but <sighs> anger. That's about the best way I can describe it. Start the stars. Reggie Wayne, Andre Johnson, Roddy White. You tired of me saying start the stars yet? Sometimes you need a reminder, though, who the stars are, so I'm going to keep saying it. That list now also includes Dion Branch. Um, the guy's been awesome lately. I'll call him a sleeper. Tennessee's Kenny Britt this week. He hasn't had any fantasy impact since week seven. That's why I feel safe calling him a sleeper. Faces the Houston defense this week. He should put up some pretty decent numbers. Let me know if you have any questions about wide receiver. Again, it's hard to get to all the guys who are going to have fantasy impact this week because there are so many darn wide receivers in the league. Some injuries to watch at tight end. Antonio Gates, Heath Miller, Todd Heap, uh, all questionable uh, we'll see what happens with those guys. Keep an eye on them. You have to go with Vernon Davis, Mercedes Lewis, Jacob Tammy if you have them. Uh, Chris Cooley, solid lately, also faces Dallas this week. That should equal good things for him. On the flip side of that matchup, Jason Witten was big last week. Should also be monstrous again against a weak Washington defense uh, this week. Again, keep an eye on the injury status at wide receiver for the Giants. That will figure into Kevin Boss's status. He did have a touchdown catch on Monday. If Manningham and or Smith are out, that's going to help uh, Boss's value. Wouldn't necessarily call him a sleeper because who knows what he'll do. He's good sometimes, not very good other times. I guess you would just call that inconsistent instead of me rambling. Uh, but Bo Scaife up against the Houston defense could put up some decent numbers. So if you're looking for a tight end, you really need somebody. Bo Scaife might be a guy that you could turn to. Uh, the New England Patriots defense has been putting up solid numbers lately. You add into that Green Bay's weak offense within the last few weeks. That equals good things for the Pats again. Uh, as far as a fantasy defense goes. Also like Chicago, Pittsburgh, and the New York Jets this week. That Pittsburgh-New York Jets game uh, should be a grinded-out type battle. So both of those defense probably won't allow too many yards, but turnovers will be uh, more difficult to come by in that matchup. Uh, also need to give a shout-out to anyone who faces the Carolina Panthers. This week it's Arizona, so that's my sleeper pick of the week, the Cardinals. Also like the Chargers this week. They're not a sleeper, but they should bounce back. Uh, against the 49ers on Thursday. They did bounce back last week as well, but they should be good against the 49ers again this week. That's all I have for you this week. Uh, I know you'll have plenty of questions, and that's okay. I'm willing to hear all of your questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll get back to you. If you're watching this on my website, timlewissports.com, you can leave a comment there as well. I'll be sure to get back to you. Several quick ways to get in touch with me. You can get in touch with me on Twitter, at Lewis Sports. You can also get in touch with me on my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Tim Lewis Sports. And a lot of you get in touch with me via email. Uh, that's Tim at Tim Lewis Sports.com. Again, Tim at Tim Lewis Sports.com. Almost forgot it there, so the more I say it, the better chance I'll have to remember it myself. Uh, get in touch with me at any time. Again, on game days around 8:30 West Coast time. Uh, 11.30 East Coast time, wherever you are, I'm going to let you do the math. I'm usually up and at them answering questions on Twitter for anybody who has last-second questions about the matchup. Um, trying to think of anything else I need to throw at you. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you haven't already. And I think that's about it. Have an awesome week. Good luck in the postseason. And get in touch with me if you have any questions. Take care.